Hello, I'm Charlotte Connolly and I'm the Museum Curator at the Polar Museum. Welcome to the Big Freeze Festival. Today I'm joined by Darren Rees, who was our artist in residence in Antarctica in 2015. So that's where he was six years ago today. Now, before we turn to Darren to find out a bit more about him, I'm going to play a short clip uh, of some of the things he got up to in Antarctica. I'm Darren Rees, I'm the uh, artist in residence for the Scott Polar Research Institute. Every year they sponsor an artist uh, to come down to the Antarctic to join the Navy uh, Ice Patrol vessel, the HMS Protector. So I've uh, four nearly five weeks on board Protector. I joined the boat on, on the Falkland Islands, um, came straight down to the Antarctic Peninsula and uh, it's been an amazing experience as you can imagine it's been a lifetime's ambition for somebody who's interested in natural history and uh, um, wildlife and wild places it's uh, lived up to my expectation it's just incredible the landscape is, is bewildering at times it's difficult for an artist to take it all in and assimilate it it's this uh, uh, information overload at times but it's just a real privilege you can hear in the background the special effects by the elephant seals. I'm painting these elephant seals today from a distance of what 20 feet. They're just perfect models and uh, it's just magical when you lift your eyes up from sketching elephant seals to see all these icebergs parked in the bay. So these are the elephant seals that I've been painting today. Icebergs in the bay been painting. These are the uh, elephant uh, seals just parked you? under the... I, I like to incorporate some of the man-made structures at rather a base there because the, these are very used to people here so these are hunkered in the shade so it's been a profitable day. So thanks Darren for sharing that video. Um, perhaps you can tell us a bit about your residency. Maybe we should start with what inspired you to apply? It's, um, it's, a, it's a lovely story actually, uh, Char, because uh, um, I was writing some articles for wildlife artists and uh, based on wildlife artists for a magazine. And I was interviewing Daffala Scott, uh, who I just love Daffala's paintings. And uh, she made me aware of the uh, residency because she just come back from the Antarctic. I think uh, it was the centenary of her, her great uh, her grandfather's uh, expedition. And uh, so it was Daffala that, uh, um, that urged me to apply. Um, so uh, uh, I did, and <laughs> I was over the moon when I was selected. It was a, it was a memorable day, actually. Uh, I, I remember it so vividly. Uh, displaying all my paintings. I'd, I'd done some work in the Arctic and I, and I brought all these canvases down to the Polar Museum. The interview there was uh, in the Shackleton Memorial Library. And I put all my big paintings around and there was all this memorabilia from Shackleton's and Scott's um, expeditions. And it was very special to have my paintings just sitting there. And uh, at, at the end of the interview, uh, that, that was selected. It was just a, a memorable, memorable day. Um, and that was the start of it, really. And uh, it just went on and got better and better, the whole experience. So you'd done some work in Svalbard, I think, before you applied to the residency. Did that equip you in any ways with spending time in the Antarctic? I think it was great training, really, <laughs> when you think about it. Um, I've been up to Svalbard uh, five, uh, six times now. 
Um, and uh, I was working as a, a, a naturalist guide, I, I also a tour guide, and taking people, showing them wildlife, and I'm sketching all the time. So when, uh, when I was on boats up in Svalbard, uh, I would be uh, uh, using the time uh, uh, in the evenings, particularly when you had this lovely 24-hour uh, uh, daylight to do lots of paintings at night. Um, and uh, also, you know, painting out in the land there. And uh, I was just got used to, I guess, um, painting in cold temperatures. <laughs> and, and also living in Scotland, you're, it's pretty cold up here at the time. Uh -huh. but, well, I was well equipped, but uh, I, I, I think the passion for the sort of uh, uh, the polar uh, experience uh, uh, was hopefully it got me over the line for selection. I think. So tell us a bit about your trip then. Now, I've had a bit of a sneak preview because on social media at the minute, you're doing uh, a day in the life of your trip because it's six years to the day since you were there. Um, I thought it'd be, it'd be fun to track that, uh, to coincide with the Big Freeze Art Fest then. Um, when I looked at the dates, I thought it was, it was there to the day, uh, six years to the day that I was, I was there. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, today, I was uh, six years ago, I was crossing the Drake Passage. Uh, uh, you can imagine the excitement, uh, particularly some of myself, I'm, I'm, I'm really big into birds. And there's all these seabirds that are following uh, HMS Protector when we're there and uh, sketching uh, all the albatrosses and petrels that behind the, the, the ship. And, and of course, actually, I'm, I'm not the best of sailors. And uh, that was the one thing that I was very nervous about going. Uh, was the infamous Drake Passage, but thankfully uh, um, it was very, very uh, gentle crossing uh, when, when I both going to the Antarctic and coming back. Uh, previous to uh, getting on Protector, I had three days on the Falklands, and uh, that was uh, uh, a revelation too, to uh, see these big penguin uh, colonies. And uh, uh, so I did three days in the field uh, working with penguin colonies on the uh, Falklands. And then joined uh, Protector on the thing of the 2nd or 3rd of March. So yes, then we were crossing the Drake Passage uh, before we working our way down the Antarctic Peninsula. And uh, we got as far south as uh, Rother, just south of Rother, the um, Bass uh, base. And as you can imagine, it was just a uh, uh, a revelation. It's just mm -hmm. the landscape like no other. Oh, my. It's, it's incredible. And all that was just so much sort of inspiration for someone who's visual, who, who that's, I apply my trade visually, you know, I'm working from visual stimulus all the time. Uh, it was information overload really at times. It was just memorable. It certainly looks from the picture behind you like penguin overload. I imagine as a naturalist as well as an artist that you kind of had two hats on the whole way through. And presumably some of the most remarkable experiences you've had as a naturalist as well. Yes, actually, it's it, there's always uh, um, a conflict actually at times. Because uh, uh, if I'm out, uh, I'm trying to look for these new seabirds at the back of the ship. But uh, once you start to zone in, and particularly actually with the penguins, you, uh, uh, perhaps there's not as much diversity on some of these uh, uh, sub-Antarctic islands and the uh, Antarctic Peninsula itself, there's not that diversity as there is somewhere like, I don't know, rainforest. Uh, uh, so you can look at just one or two species and really get to know them. So for instance, with all the, uh, the king penguins, you know, it's just doing all these sort of studies of king penguins and then coming back and doing these big paintings uh, uh, when I got back home in the studio. But yeah, it's that, uh, um, there is a, a bit of a conflict in, in, inside me sometimes of uh, uh, the, the, the naturalist against the, the artist. And uh, you want, uh, I, I, I'd like to feel that it's, it's, it's a nice fusion. Uh, sometimes they can be tugging in different directions, but uh, uh, when it fuses together, I think it, it works well. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm interested in that moment when you first clap eyes on Antarctica itself. Do you remember your first sight of Antarctic land? I, I remember it so vividly. Um, uh, before we got to the uh, peninsula, um, I was up on the bridge and I could see a, 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 a vague bit of land with a, a cloud formation. And uh, I was just working out and looking on the maps and it was obviously, it was Elephant Island. And of course, from my generation, Elephant Island's got so much sort of connection with uh, um, Shackleton and, and the heroic age of the exploration. And yet it, it, it was interesting because uh, of the, the age of the officers on the ship, because they didn't have that connection. <laughs> the, 
the hairs were coming on the back of the, my neck were standing up. I thought, wow, it's Elephant Island. And they said, yes, it's an island called Elephant Island. I said, yes, it's <laughs> Elephant Island. It's historical. Uh, so that was the first bit of uh, land uh, we saw coming across the Drake Passage. And then, of course, the following morning, we woke up and we had this wraparound view. We were going pushing through the Gerlach Strait. And it was the most, one of the most memorable days of my life. Um, the, the sun was, was lifting in perfect conditions, uh, um, pretty much flat calm. And we had this uh, uh, pause overnight where the engines, uh, uh, or sorry, some of the filters in the ship were blocked with krill. They were getting so much filter because we were pushing through this sort of milky waters of the Gerlach Strait. And of course, where there's lots of krill, there's lots of whales. And I just couldn't believe, because everywhere we were looking, there were these blows from uh, of whales. And we estimated around about 100 whales in view at one time. It was just incredible. And that was the very first morning at the Antarctic Peninsula. And you can imagine, for someone who's interested in, in wildlife, I was, I was just in heaven. It was wonderful. Um, so there's a couple of things I think I should explain for the people at home who may or may not know what Elephant Island is, um, having heard you <laughs> enthusing about it. So uh, Shackleton wanted to do an expedition where he took one ship to one side of Antarctica and another ship to another and then walked across the continent. So um, the Aurora, which was on the opposite side of the continent to where Shackleton was headed, laid depots. And then the idea was that Shackleton would land and then walk towards the middle of Antarctica and then onwards and pick up the depots as they went. However, Shackleton on the Endurance got trapped in the ice. Uh, the ice crushed the ship and Shackleton and all of his crew, after a very arduous journey, ended up on Elephant Island, which is, uh, Darren, as you will be able to tell us, in the middle of nowhere. Nobody knew they were there. No one was going to come looking for them to rescue them because they thought they were landed on Antarctica for the next year or more. Um, so they had to find a means of escape, but in the meantime, they were stuck on this island. So six of the, the crew reinforced a lifeboat and used that to sail back to South Georgia over some of the roughest seas on the planet. Um, meanwhile, they left the other men on Elephant Island. And eventually they got to the, the six people in the lifeboat got to South Georgia. They crossed a mountain range. They got some whalers to help them. And after multiple attempts, they did manage to rescue all of those men that were trapped on Elephant Island. So it's a remarkable story, look it up. I haven't done it justice at all there in that very, uh, very quick snapshot, but it's an amazing story. And I can see entirely why, Darren, you looked at it. I'm like, wow, it's Elephant Island. It's, it, it, uh, I guess I, I'm showing my age. It was just, uh, I was born up with, with these legends, you know, Shackleton and Scott, they meant so much. You know, and uh, um, it was that golden age of exploration. It was just so vivid, the, the recollection. I saw Elephant Island. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I was just amazed at the reaction on the ship because they're a different generation and they hadn't heard the story. Uh, I, I thought it would be core in the syllabus for being a naval officer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it is a, it's one of those stories that I, I tell it and I say, you wouldn't believe it. If it was made up, it would sound so far-fetched, but it all happened, so, yeah. Okay, so where have we got to? You've, you've been through the Gerlach Strait, you've clapped eyes on um, Antarctica for the first time. Did you manage to land on the peninsula at all? And what did you? Yeah, so um, we, we spent a couple of days working our way down and uh, um, we landed at uh, a couple of places, uh, um, Bass, the uh, British Antarctic Survey Base at Rotherham. Mm -hmm. um, we, and we were allowed to, to get off land and uh, uh, the HMS Protector was doing some survey work around there and uh, uh, helping out with, I think they were developing the, the key that, uh, that uh, Robert and uh, they were also pumping fuel for um, the upcoming winter. So we had three days and that was great to actually get out, stretch your legs and mm -hmm. uh, I could do a lot of work on land. So most of the time I was sketching when I was on the ship. Um, I was using the uh, crow's nest as a, a make do studio. That was fantastic. And painting from uh, beneath the heli deck at the back of the ship. And uh, um, so it was great when we did land, get all my paints out and pump myself down. And as you can see from the, the video, um, I just had great fun pumping myself down to these huge, great elephant seals. And when you were fed up with painting elephant seals, um, 
yeah, it's just this most dynamic view of glaciers parked, uh, sorry, icebergs parked in the bay where they were carving up the glacier. And, and there were lots of uh, um, interesting wildlife there anyway. There were the daily penguins, mm -hmm. uh, and Antarctic shags. And there was enough wildlife for, to enthuse me when I wasn't looking at the landscape. Um, we also did landings um, on Horseshoe Island um, and, and did some sketching there. And, uh, and Deception Island when we started working our way back. Uh, that, and that was great fun. So, so we had a couple of landings and it was, uh, it was great to, um, to get you just banked out on land and actually experience it. Uh, mm -hmm. And all the time, you just have to pinch yourself when you get up and look around. Because the, the, this is wraparound panorama of these huge, great, I don't know, 7,000 foot peaks and up ice and rock, just wonderful. Now, I do have a, a, a question about the full sensory experience, because the one thing I thought when I saw you next to those elephant seals is, God, I bet they smell. W was it a, a fully sensory experience? They do, actually. They have got bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and there's lots of flatulence, too. To be yeah. Uh, I think that comes over in the video as well. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, they, uh, they were incredible. I never really... Um, uh, wanted to get too close, but you can see from the video, you know, there was, it was a, set, a respectful distance, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it was just a, an amazing experience. Uh, I spent, uh, 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 yeah, a couple of days working with the elephants. Mm -hmm. So having had this experience, do you think it's affected your, your artistic practice since then? How, how has it kind of had a, a long-term impact, do you think? Well, it, it's interesting looking at the, the work that I produced say after 2006. 2006 was the first time that I, I got to Svalbard and there it was incredible that uh, not only uh, my reactions and the reactions of the guests that I was with but the, the reactions of the crew on the ship as we were pushing uh, right around the north of Svalbard in completely ice-free waters and, and uh, you could, we were seeing these uh, uh, glaciers in retreat there were islands of rock that had never been charted before on, on maps, and these were um, uh, exposed for the first time in, 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 in a weird sort of uh, echo of the, the shapes of these rocks were echoing the shapes of the bowhead whales that were slaughtered up there. So there was all this sort of stimulus, and, and we were witnessing uh, uh, climate change in action. This was in 2006. And... Uh, uh, I came back and my painting shifted. And of course it was that body of work from uh, Svalbard that I think was very instrumental in me securing the post of artist and residence um, to go to the Antarctic. So um, it, it's a continuation of that. And I, I think certainly uh, from 2006 onwards, I think my paintings have gone in a different direction. So I, 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 I would include the, the work from the Arctic and the Antarctic as, as, as moving my, my work in a, a more thoughtful, uh, uh, more meaningful to me uh, way. Because certainly these places uh, are, uh, are quite haunting, I think. Um, and I'm not a religious person, but they, you, know, they, they, you can see why there's a, a, a spiritual side to a lot of the art produced, I think, from the, the, the Arctic peoples in particular. Um, so yes, I think it has affected my work and, and will affect my, my practice uh, ongoing, really. Um, I think that's a fantastic place to leave it. Um, you've inspired me to want to have another look at your paintings and hopefully you've also inspired a few other people out there to consider applying for our artist residencies as well when they come up. Um, we've got quite a nice tradition where you were inspired by Daphila Scott and actually Shelley Perkins in her interview that I did with her said, oh yeah, I was inspired when I met Darren Rees and he told me all about this. So um, yeah, That's definitely an opportunity. Great that there's this continuation and I, and I think that the, the artists that are going down there will in, in turn inspire other people. It is an inspirational place for sure. And, yeah. and, I, and I just want to thank everybody at uh, the Polar Museum and Scott Polar Research Institute for enabling me to, to go there. It's just a, an amazing experience. Oh, well, you're very welcome. And of course, we should also thank the Navy who give our artists a birth. And finally, thank you all at home for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of the Big Freeze and uh, we'll see you for some more events.